Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Queen in Middle School for Life. Well, it is uh, 23 hours and 39 minutes into the 28th day of November. I don't know, April popped into my mind for some particular reason. But it's uh, not that warm out to be April. And this is our transitions vlog. I think we've got another train coming in. I think we were, during the last vlog, the observation vlog, we had a uh, steam train come by. We heard a steam whistle. Uh. Anyways, uh, I was going to do the gnosis vlog, but I can't remember what I was going to say. I don't really have uh, something sort of in mind. And I'm starting to fall asleep. So my eyes are closed again. And so uh, this is going to be the transition vlog. This will take us into the 29th day to, to a little after midnight. Uh, well, maybe less, maybe less than 20 minutes. Uh, but anyways, this is the note section of the vlog. It's going to be also the transition section of the Our Life in Cy uh, Cyborg Alpha. Let's see for the train to come in. Both both wave guides have been activated. Well, that's that train. Uh, with my you with this type of work, you, you, you at this point you're using your ears, not your eyes, so you can take a bit of a rest and sort of keep your eyes closed. And I got, with my eyes open, I don't feel good. It, if I feel like there's not enough energy there, but with my eyes closed, I have enough energy to continue on. And this kind of reflects this in terms of in terms of the way I feel. Uh, ironically enough I smell skunk. And yet it's freezing cold outside. There's snow on the ground. It's about uh, 28 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh. The cloud situation keeps changing, but uh, now it's so, sort of overcast. There's a bit of a, a lower level blanket, but there's also a higher level blanket because when the sky was so, somewhat clear, you could see deeper into the sky. And you didn't see clouds, but you couldn't see sky, couldn't see stars. When you can, when you see 
when you see a dark sky with no stars, that tells you there's higher la higher layer clouds that are sort of blocking up the starlight. So you do have uh, a cloud layer above you. You just can't see it. There's no uh, reflection of light or, or, or like particularly city lights on the clouds. You can see the clouds now because there's a reflection uh, from the city, from the light street lights on the clouds, and so it gives you uh, a form of luminescence. Uh, anyway, I'm about to go in and start my do the the, uh, the YouTube stroll, the Yowie vlogs. It's my standard, and I'm sort of watching to see how Carly Reese sort of evolves in the situation that she's in. On there, I, I I would like to help her out as much as I possibly can. I wouldn't if she wants someone to do the editing for her. And I do the editing. I do it for free. Uh, she's got a free university here. If she wants to come in uh, and sort of study here. And the thing is, it's like the studying here is in terms of a university is open. It's free. There are no bar entrance barriers. There's no uh, fees for it. It's just a little different. It's not your standard. Uh, university courses where your standard university course it takes you into called the standard uh, perspective of life you make you part of the uh, the sort of the cog or the machinery uh, of what we call society the university that I have allows you to go well I actually the functionality of it is the purpose of it is to go in and question and understand why you do what you do why do you do this or why do you do that in terms of of looking at life as 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 a form of observation and and this is where it's kind of a, the initial we may say it is, is something in terms of philosophy but because you can do observation you sort of observe history and you do this with these archives uh, I was talking to to someone that, that in, in these archives, uh, these are books and stuff like that that someone has digitized, and a lot of times the the there are memoirs, and you sit down and you read through somebody's memoir, and you get a sense for who the person is, and after you have a sense for who the person is, you can see how their ideas, the thoughts and ideas, depending on what they wrote in there, uh, are there any parallels to events that you know about in history. And if you do have parallels there, you know, what do they think? How do they experience it? You know, this is what you would look for in these particular memoirs. Uh, you have other people who have published their diaries after they die. Their diaries, their journals are, are published. And so you have a lot of letters. You have a lot of correspondence to go through. Again, you get a personal view, a personal view of history. Uh, it's uh, basically your firsthand account rather than having someone sort of uh, give you an overview or a summary of history. That's what most most of the sort of called the American Revised History, most of the history that you learned in school, and even in, in college and university, there's simply someone's regurgitation. It's their explanation as to what happened. You're not actually seeing the thing as it was or from somebody's perspective in terms of a person who was actually there. You're given a summary of it. And so it's, it's the professor's view, the professor's understanding or whatever author you're reading at that particular time, particularly if the author was not there. But my university, because you can go find these sources, and more often than not, they're free. They don't, they don't, you don't have to pay anything for them. Uh, and so you get to pick these things up. You get to sort of see them, read through them, and make their experience, the experience that's in the memoir, as part of your experience. You can also do this with, with, with history as well. You can go into the history of, of different books and so on and so forth and find what was going on at that particular point in time. So you can do a history of medical oddities. You can do a history of music. You can do a history of jazz. There's, there's a number of different histories that you can go into and sort of see uh, 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 what was going on. And you can do this through uh, the books that are out there in, in terms of various forms of literature so you do have an opportunity to sort of and this is it's exploration but exploration takes an enormous amount of time it doesn't occur right away because 
the pieces are out there scattered all over the place. And the first thing you're doing in terms of, in terms of going out there is basically a random walk. You have no idea where you're going. You know what you really don't know what to look for. It is as you go out there and you have more experience out there, the more you get the sort of you get a feel for things, you feel for the environment. And that allows you to some degree to shape uh, where you're going to go next. And this is why you start off with a general survey uh, and you go in no particular direction. You just sort of pick something and go. <laughs> and that's what the, most of the first year look, is like that. It's a sort of a random walk on the beach, picking up things here and there. And it's not until you get enough of a collection and sort of go over the collection, review it, that you can go out to do something more specific. But the thing is, you always have to have that random walk. I understand that the random walk is always where you're going to find something. You're not going to, in many cases, go out to a specific archive because these specific archives will never be named. A lot of times these things were never, are never intended to be published to begin with. And so what happens if someone publishes them, then all of a sudden somebody realizes there's stuff in there that should be published, and that whole site where the archive is yanked, and so that's the end of your access to it. But there's so many people who have done the same thing that you got you know, the, the the trickle or the the little tiny speck becomes a larger collection. Oh, anyways, uh, I said I'm gonna go in uh, and uh, do my YouTube stroll. I said let's see what happens with uh, Ali on the Yowie on, on the Yowie vlogs, and uh, I'll see what uh, Carly's done. Uh, in uh, she's typically in uh, our family now, but she has been sort of lacking in her uh, her own personal stuff. Uh, but she's only one week out, so that's not that bad. Uh, a lot of people who are younger people in the, who are in position are two, three months out. The only one who is remaining consistent and cur current is Clay Leia and uh, from the uh, Toa Squad. And uh, what's her name? Kesley from uh, the Leroy's. They're maintaining maintaining their channel, so. Uh, that's where I'm going next, because once again I'm falling asleep out here. <laughs> so, well, we're about a half hour into the 30th day of November. It's 29 minutes into the day. I think we got a train coming by. I just finished the successful a, 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 a gnostic a, a, a gnosis vlog. Those are difficult. All the, I think all the vlogs, the essay, are difficult to work with. Particularly the first draft, I don't have anything written out. So I pull them in as I try to organize my thoughts. So the essay comes out as I organize my thoughts. So basically, you're getting a verbalization of my thoughts. <laughs> it is difficult, often, it is often difficult to put together, to string together. <clears throat> these thoughts, because they can be presented in a number of different ways. And then you have, of course, fatigue. <clears throat> causes you to forget. And that becomes another issue. <clears throat> and it's cold out here, so your nose runs. And because you're doing other observations, it's always distractions and so on and so forth. I heard the train. I, hear, I can hear everything, but no horn. So either I've missed something or there was no horn. Or the train is stopping. Sometimes the trains stop there, and they wait for other trains to come by in order for the tracks to clear. So it may be that the train is there. Had, they came in. They're sitting there. They're waiting for uh, the flights to change so they can move forward. And that's probably what it is because they typically come through. The horns typically come through every hour. It's only been a half hour, and uh, maybe they're waiting for one o'clock before they come by, before they move on again. <sighs> Otherwise, things have been moving pretty well, uh, uh, moving ahead for, you know, moving ahead bit by bit. 
Uh, we will be going on to the uh, Yowie vlogs in a bit. About maybe 10, 15 minutes, I'll be going in and getting you ready to do the Yowie vlogs. And sort of comment on things that I've sort of seen. I, I, I see, I, I think uh, uh, Allie is sort of struggling a little bit. Uh, and, and because Carly put up put up a, a, another vlog. Uh, she's sort of moving along. She's moving along slowly, but what she's doing is fine. She, she's, she's maintaining uh, the viewership on her on her channel, and she's got a, an excellent viewership. Her, her, her rankings are very good in terms of uh, the number of views she gets. And that's, uh, yes, subscribers matter, but views matter more because it's the views, your click-throughs, that really determine uh, what you're going to get paid in terms of your monetization. Now, my channels aren't monetized because I end up saying, I'll, more often than not, I end up saying something that will be offensive, that will not be within the terms of service if you're monetized. See, there, 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 there is a term of service for general use if you're not monetized. But then what happens as you're monetized, you have to create a con you have to create content, the force of create content that is then is palatable uh, for people who are going to advertise. You have to be you have to be marketable. And not all the comments, particularly if you're going to be open and honest about things, not all comments, if you're going to be raw, are appropriate for marketing. And so you become a sort of a, a detraction, a, a, a deterrent to advertising. And so, of course, that becomes a violation uh, of the terms of service if you're going to monetize. So there are two fundamental, two fundamental models, non-monetized and monetized. Uh, monetized get promoted ahead of the non-monetized. Uh, and so my stuff doesn't grow as quickly. It, it takes a lot of effort to really grow. But then that's but for me. That's all right. This is not about uh, becoming coming famous on YouTube. It's about spreading ideas. It's about uh, uh, creating an existence that where I can give my put my ideas out there. Some people will pick it up. They'll pass it on to other people, and slowly the information, the the knowledge gets out there. It disseminates. It, it spreads out. It uh, uh, diffuses, if you will. But again, that's my that's my take on things. So I don't have a problem doing it. So I'm doing I'm out here doing observation anyways. You know, I'm doing atmospheric physics and acoustical physics. That's why I listen for the trains. The, the trains are the acoustical physics. I can't see the tracks, but I know they're there. And the thing is that this is how I understand you know about the wave bo the wave the the Bose waveguide system. Well, what is it about? Well, it's about boxes and how sound waves go through. These particular boxes. And what I can hear from here is that I have a waveguide to the to my left on the west side and I have a waveguide on the right. How the sound travels from one to the other or on both sides of them uh, really determines what I hear and how and it tells me how the train is configured and what direction it's going in. There's a number of indicators that you can see from these wave you can hear from these waveguides that will give you sort of this information, but you have to wait for the train to come by. You have to wait for it to go through in terms of the actual uh, crossing, where you hear the horn. <clears throat> and because they do stop here, you hear the engine. The engines will go up and then down, up and then down. Why? Because the the engines, diesel engines, need to stay warm. And so the, the, engine, the engines by themselves, even though the train is not moving, the engine will rev up and then go down again, rev up and, and go down again. It's not that, and it's not an indica indication that the train is moving. It's just an indication that the train is there and its engines are maintaining its temperature. That's what it is. And, of course, the, your car does the same thing, too. The, the car has its idling idling speed. Uh, when the engine starts to sputter and it's, there's not enough heat there, the engine will rev up and come back down. But with the car, it's a smaller engine, so the, the differences aren't that large. When you're dealing with a larger engine, like a train engine, you're dealing with something that's very large, uh, and so the the idling differences between high and low are going to be larger as well. So that's but is it? This is what I do. This is what I do all day long. Uh, but I'll go. I said I watched I watched Carly's uh, 
she was she's doing uh, more of the promotional videos now. Ugh. But the brand deals, that's how you get paid. You, pay, you get paid more from the brand deals than you do from from uh, YouTube. And as long as the brand deals and things you're, you're selling are something that other people want to watch or, or, or want to buy, then you're doing you're doing you're doing fine. And uh, Carly seems to be able to style herself in such a manner that she's been picked up by these different clothing companies uh, and clothing uh, retailers, uh, most of them online, and she's been able to sort of sell their clothes. And of course, when she because she buys a lot of clothes, uh, whenever she gets too much, too many clothes, she's got Poshmark, par, Poshmark, and so she sells all, all her old clothes that she doesn't want anymore off on par, Poshmark. So it kind of balances things out. <coughs> Anyways, uh, it's, it's time to go in, and we've done this long enough. So uh, the transition. I was looking at the time here, but my eyes are closing. So it's, that means it's time for me to go inside and uh, switch over to the uh, YouTube stroll. We are Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life.